Hey Artful friends, welcome to my channel. If you're new to art for healing and joy, I want to let you know that I'm very new as an artist. This is my eighth week and I'm inviting you to come along on the journey with me as I discover and uncover the joy of doing art for healing and for expression and so much more. Okay, so Today, what I want to share with you is now that it's been two months that I've been doing art, I began with watercolor and then I progressed and I just different artists have influenced me so far. And I've got kind of a chronicle of that under my blog, which I'll link for you below if you want to just follow that or check out these different artists. And each one I've learned some great things from. And the tendency is when I learn a new thing, like when I first started learning watercolor, I just wanted to keep repeating the same things over and over. Like if I found success with something, I just wanted to keep doing that. But then pretty soon that gets a little, you know, everything starts to look the same. Like it just, there isn't the challenge of expanding the possibilities. So even though the tendency for me is to right now to want to continue doing collages because that's what I've been doing lately, I've been having so much fun taking a great free course with Louise Fletcher. And if you don't know her art, oh, I would love to be an artist like Louise Fletcher. Her, she does amazing uh, landscape abstract art. And so anyway, in this free course I've been doing with her all week, we've had some great assignments. And today's assignment is to um, go paint over something that you consider maybe ugly art that you've made or something that you didn't really like that you made and paint over it. And so I'm taking her up on that challenge. And I know so far in my assignments that I've done with her, it's really helped me to stretch and grow. And you know, the main thing about the art that I'm sharing and calling permissive intuitive art is giving yourself permission, permission to just express and not be so attached with the outcome of how it looks. You know, I post a lot of what I've been making on my Facebook page and I get comments from people saying, oh, everything you make is amazing. And that is not the case. Okay, that's just what I, um, you know, what makes the cut. So let me show you some of my fails and, and then show you what I'm going to do today. You're going to come along the journey with me of me repurposing my, what I think are fail. So, okay. It's kind of embarrassing, but I'm just going to, for the sake of art and for growth, I'm going to share some of my fails. So here, I don't know what I was thinking on this one. And you know, you never know, uh, like I'll sit down to do a session of art and I'll have some things in my mind and what comes out on the page can often be like a huge surprise and not so much in the best of ways. And sometimes it can be amazing what comes out and like way beyond what I ever could have fathomed and it. And it feels divine, like divine inspiration has come through. So that's, that's what's so exciting about art is it's such an adventure. Okay. Now, I don't know. I don't know about this one. Okay. Here's another one. Like sometimes I'll just start painting and like it these little creatures will come out of nowhere so i don't know i'll be repurposing this one like you know it, all of these though i'm i was playing and learning with uh working with metallics working with watercolors learning to make marks yeah learning to work with metallics and then just these creatures that sort of come into the into the mix this is kind of like a zebra creature who knows i don't even know an elephant right here i don't know all right so i'm going to start repurposing this painting right here and i will be using liquitex matte me, uh, matte gel right here and also matte medium so matte medium is for your thinner pieces of paper so like your tissue paper and your deli paper and that kind of thing and matte gel you want to use with your thicker pieces of paper well, the way i'm going to begin i think is with some collage so i've got this big basket here of all these different collage papers i've made some are on tissue paper, some are on printer paper, uh, some are on maybe like more cardstock. So I've just got a whole bunch of, of different choices here. So I've just narrowed down 
some choices, just a few things here so I'm, it's not too overwhelming. And I'll begin with maybe putting down some collage pieces and just go from there and just see what happens. And I want to invite you to come along. One thing I wanted to point out is sometimes when the paper goes over the edge, instead of cutting it off, I just fold it over and glue it down. And I find that that works better than trying to cut off that raw edge at the top. And I love to use this art wedge and it's great because you don't get the glue so much all over your hands as well. Okay, so what I have set up here is I have picked out a bunch of colors that I have on the ready. I've got some palette paper that I'm gonna use for putting the paint on. And I'm also gonna keep on the ready some oil pastels. And then I grabbed a bunch of tools. So the purpose of what I'm doing here is to stretch out of my comfort zone, to keep growing, to keep experimenting. So I tend to get into this little rut of doing the things that I know work, and I'm gonna th keep throwing in things that are new to me. So one new thing is using this blue shop towel to help blot things out. Another th new thing is I went and I got these different plastic palette knives. I got these at Hobby Lobby and um, they're shaped you know, a little bit differently and it's really fun to paint with palette knives. I'd never done that before. And I also haven't really used oil pastels that much, so I'm gonna keep stretching myself with that. Um, I have a couple little, little stamps. Um, and then I just look around the house for odd shaped things that might be fun to use. So this is one I really like to use and I use this one a lot. Um, I also got these little um, sponge rollers, so I might be using that. Uh, new for me is this serrated edge catalyst wedge to use, which will be fun. And then I often use this little round. Sometimes people use credit cards. This comes out of my sewing life. Uh, it, it's a pattern for when you wanna make circles when you're sewing. And then I even have a serrated knife that might be fun to use. I also like using fan brushes, that could be fun. And I'm gonna start right now with using uh, a charcoal pencil and making some marks and perhaps some oil pastels and take it from there. So join me on this next part of the adventure here. I took my blue shop towel and I got it a little bit wet and then I dipped it into the paint and then I'm smearing it. I learned this from Louise Fletcher so I love it actually. It's a great technique. heart-shaped rubber stamp here. Okay, 
Okay, so I just took a pause to go use my blow dryer to dry it off so I can continue. Otherwise, if I keep working on top of wet paint, it's just gonna turn into a muddy mess. Uh, at this point, I could have said, forget it, this is ugly, I'm giving up, but I'm not gonna give up, never give up. I'm gonna carry on and just see what happens. Okay, some Naples yellow, and I think I'll use that with my little rolling brush here. So it's kind of watery, so I might as well just go with the drips. Just go with what's happening in the moment and with the flow. So there's some drips, we'll just drip. Okay, that's kind of cool. This whole concept of putting layers and layers on top of layers and layers is brand new for me. And actually, it's really fun. So you can see I covered most of what I just did up with that wipe, but now I'm using a palette knife to kind of scrape through and make marks and um, it, it creates really interesting textures. And now I'm adding a little more collage. I had my brush sitting in water, so it was very saturated. And then I just dipped my very wet brush into a little bit of the black paint and I flicked it with my fingers to create splash marks. Sometimes I do a tapping method using another brush to flick the, the wet paint around, but I actually like this method with my fingers better. You just have to keep some paper towel around so that you can wipe your fingers off when you're done. Okay, I just went back and used my blow dryer a little bit more on that. And I'm kind of feeling this color right here. I like all the different colors that are popping up. Like a little bit of purple, a little bit of that sort of metallic rusty red. I like the way the gold is shimmering with the black and white contrast. Pretty fun right now. Okay, what's fun here are these marks from the scratches I made are starting to come to the surface. All kinds of things are coming to the surface. Just gonna keep going. I'm gonna take some pearlized white and go on top here.
so what I did was I cut the painting down to the size of this frame, which is eight by eight. And here it is. I know there's a lot of reflection anywhere I go right now. There's a lot of reflection, but let's see if you can see it. And what's nice is there's some metallic paints in there. So when you move it to catch the light, the metallics show up. There we have it, the final re-upcycled piece. Okay, it's been such a fun afternoon. I've spent hours down here in my little art studio having a blast. And I'm repurposing other paintings I've had from the past that I kind of don't love. Okay, so this one, I'm just cutting it out from here and I'm gonna make it the same size as the last frame that I have. And then I'm just gonna add a few little touches to it. But this actually was a watercolor painting and I used pen to make the marks. And so I'm just gonna do a tiny little bit of collage on it. Again, the metallics are so fun and just really have that great shimmer when the light hits it. Love that. Oh my goodness, what a fun day repurposing old paintings that I thought were terrible and we're gonna go in the rubbish bin, but instead, look at what I came up with. A series of four new collage paintings that have been upcycled, and I'm calling this series Second Date. From this to Gold Rush Picnic. This one transformed into Peacock Symphony. And from this into Atomic Love. And finally, this one went from this to become Animal Sanctuary. And as of right now, all of these are available for sale on my website, robinrandolph.com. As I'm concluding here and wrapping things up, I'll show you some close-ups of each one of these. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this and maybe learned some things, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. I always appreciate so much your, your comments. And of course, I love it when you subscribe and hit the like button. And I want to encourage you to go over to my website, robinrandolph.com, and subscribe at the top and get my complete list of my favorite, my top favorite, go to art supplies for art for healing and joy. Thanks again for watching.